My name is Doris Crude, and thank you so much, the Historical Society here of Isotherma, for inviting me, number one, and to the students that's attending, and to all the staff and faculty. I thank you, and all my friends and, and uh, organization uh, people that's out there. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Today, I'm going to talk about Relton County and the wealth of hidden treasures, as I call them, hidden treasures here in Relton County that has impacted uh, the life of Relaferton County. You're going to see information on different ladies that does great work in Relaferton County. And we're here at the Isothermal, and with the uh, history matters, beginning the pre past to the present, bringing the past to the present. And today I'll bring you to the ladies of Relaferton County that has helped contribute. The last year, around about April 2022, the African American Museum presented a program called African American Ladies in Relton County. And we grabbed all these ladies that we thought was doing great things and we put them in a booklet and everybody loved the booklet. And they came in and they presented themselves in a great manner. And somehow Rel Isotherma heard about this project, saw it in the paper, and thought it was much worthy to be presented today. So I'm just thankful for that again. These ladies consist of, believe it or not, they all consist of teachers, principals, nurses, uh, port writers, art, uh, art artists, lob, uh, lawyers, business owners, hairdressers, models, preachers, sport directors, politics, civil rights activists. We have young business owner, young sport players, and now they are becoming inventors. And that's just to name a few that these ladies are doing and continue to do with their young people. All of these skilled positions come with knowing that black women history have stated that blacks should not even be in business in the world today. They have a women suffrage movement and the women, the white women were in front of the women's suffrage movement and the black ladies was in the back. But it was said that it was the women's money. I couldn't figure that one out. Anyway, that's what happened then. And then you got to remember back then, you got to remember that the white man thought that they was the leader of everybody, even the black women. So that kind of held them back. Also, you got to remember that when the African-American women's slavery was into existence. You gotta remember, only thing they wanted the less slave ladies to do was to have babies, cook in the kitchen, feed their children, and work in the fields. Those are the things they wanted them to do, but they could do more. And then at night, the ladies would get together and they'd do some self-learning themselves. They got in their little cupboard, their little hole, and they taught each other how to read. Well, don't let somebody teach you how to read and you learn how to read. You can come a long ways in life. And that's what they did. Those slave ladies began to explore and to start bringing things to life. For instance, you know for yourself, you heard the story of Ida Mae Wells. She was a journalist, she was a writer, owner, and a women's activist. They believed in the rights of women. So they got together and they fought for the rights of women in a way that people understood that they wanted to bring their strengths out as well. And that was important. You've heard of the civil rights, I mean the slave person that freed all the slaves. You've heard of Harriet Tugman. Harriet Tugman was another person that had a movement going on. And when they talk about the Underground Railroad, they talking about your house, my house, their house, and everybody else's house. But one thing I learned about the Underground Railroad, you know those ladies, they used to have all these can-can skirts on? And around those can-can skirts, they would hide people up under there. Amazing. Things that you learn when you read history and travel through like we do to different museums. So, and it's Sojourner Truth was another activist that believed in the women's right. So you had a lot of women back in the 1800s that believed in women's right. It just didn't start because we have our new president, vice president, Kamala Harris. It just didn't start this year or last year. It started years ago. The ladies have always had some type of education. And you know back when, when the ladies wanted to go to college, they couldn't go. They actually could not even go to college to get a degree, just like their, I guess their neighbor. They just couldn't do it. They had to go and get a degree. And once they got a degree, when they came back into the town where they lived, they couldn't even get a job. We're talking about women of today. Even, 
you know for yourself, and if you don't, I'm gonna let you know, we have about five or six black, we have about five or six president that has a black mother. You know, they keep that stuff out of the books. And those things need to be placed in the books. The history teachers need to be teaching their children this because it's important to know where your roots are from. Let me go on and talk about uh, the, the folks here in Relaputin and in Far City and in Spindale. You know, when we was coming up, we went to older people's homes. Guess what? We brought a cookie. That was entrepreneurship. We went to some people's homes and we got a hair done. Those was hairdressers. We went to people's home and we got some good advice. They were counselors. You saw people in your community, it doesn't matter if you was white or black, you still had that prominent person in your community that helped you through life, that gave you some good wisdom advice we talked about in Sunday school one time. You got ladies in your community that delivered babies. I was delivered by a midwife. I don't know her name today. All I know is I was delivered from a midwife. And if you have any doctors out here in the audience, you know that delivering baby costs a lot of money. My mother paid a jar of jelly for me. I thought that was pretty neat. You know, she's not in debt. But you had all these people doing different things. You had your preachers out there still preaching every day. You know, back then, you'd probably say, well, what is a bush harbor? That's where they had to go out and do their service. They couldn't come in, even in our church where we are. We had to go and have church at another white church in the upstairs balcony. And then we could come down and, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, do our daily activities. But to me, I think talking about black women in Relton County, I'm gonna show you a few ladies and I hope this thing works, okay? Okay, while she's doing that, let me talk about moving into Relton County. We listed some of the strong fighters in Relton County. They even told us when we was, you know, looking at our history that a lady in our community by the name of Miss Welmer, she gave, not really gave, I guess she sold the land to the county to build the New Hope School. Things like that is not even mentioned. Good shot. Things like that is not even mentioned in our books. You know how ladies get together and they work the farm and they make all these produce like vegetables, uh, what carrots and lettuce and tomatoes and watermelon those ladies would get those vegetables together ready to go into out for sale they would load it up in their trucks they would go into the communities and they would sell their vegetables entrepreneurship they've been doing entrepreneurship before I was even born and continue to do it even today but in a quick fashion now the quick fashion and talking about the present, they on the computer selling different items that they put together. A long ways from what they used to do long time ago. We had that face to face a contact that made a difference and now everything is on the computer. Do you like it? That's the way it is? Do we have to make the change? I suppose if we want to join the technology world, the change is here and we have to accept it as well. These ladies here that I'm coming up with, her name is Michelle uh, Walton and uh, Benita Davis. Benita Davis has her own beauty shop, but also besides that, she's the owner of her beauty shop, which is a great thing, and so is, uh, I don't know if you know Glenn, Day, uh, Glenn Hamilton in Relaforton, this is his daughter. And so his daughter took on the legacy of doing hair in the community, and she still does it the hair today, which is a great thing. I really think so. And back then, uh, Madam C.J. Walker, Everybody heard of Madam C.J. Walker? She was the first black woman millionaire in America, and she made a fortune off in her homemade line of hair care products for black women, and the first African American to be self-employed. All, it all started with Madam C.J. Walker when she had a scalp disorder, which caused most of her own hair loss. Madam Walker came up with a treatment that could completely change the black hair industry. Walker's system involves scalp preparation, lotion, and iron combs. She even employed a flock of a fleet of saleswomen to go out and sell her products. And she called these saleswomen her beauty culturalists. And so not only did Madam C.J. Walker done something like this for these ladies, okay. There we go. Another hair trail, trailblazers was Annie Malone. She too developed her own hair product and eventually found and delivered a large, a prominent commercial education and entrepreneur uh, enterprise center 
for cosmetic for African-American women. She went out and started her own college so that she can train African-American ladies how to not only do hair care, like Miss Barbara does, she had Barbara Little John, not only hair care, but she also showed them how to look good and have a good hair day. Now, you ladies know you want to have a good hair day, right? Everybody wants to have a good hair day. So these ladies learned that technique and showed them how to become real uh, positive looking. Like they, when you have a good hair day, you feel good about yourself. And so that's what they done. Her school was called the Polar School College Company. It's now closed down. I looked it up. It's now closed down, but you can also go to like Paul Mitchell College, you know, Isothermal Community College, things of that nature. Uh, Shelby, but I, come to Isothermal first, it's closer. 10 minutes down the road, you're right here. Not selling, where's the president at? I'm not selling the campus, but I love it that much that you should come here. You should come here. I don't, okay, now we go again. Oh, there's some more. Tiny Harris been in business over 37 years. Brenda Camp Pratt, another one that owns her own business, been in service for a long, long time. All these mus uh Barbara Johnson, beautician, now she even do catering, been in business for over 25 years. Keisha McDowell, the business leader down in Forest City at the G Team, love to work with the community down in Forest City. She does a great job. Cena uh, Forney ended up buying her own building and ended up renting some of the spaces that she brought. So these ladies have grown from started doing hair. Uh, Carolyn McDowell, now we're over to education, but Carolyn uh, McDowell is an educator. She taught there in the Far City system. And so to all these ladies, when we, they taught, they all had a love for people. So some of them wanted to be nurses. Do you think hair and nurses, uh, being a nurse, have anything to do with each other? Yeah, yeah I do too. <laughs> Quite a bit. I feel the same exact way. They do have something to do with each other. Let's go into the uh, uh, education. Uh, educator, playwright, and director. And she's a pastor, Dolly Moore, done a great job. She was a student here at one time at Isotherm Community College. We have Pam Harrison. I think Pam is she Raise your hand, Pam. Great playwright. One of her great plays was uh, uh, Big Girls Need Love Too. That was the one that put you on the map. Pam, stand up, let them see you, okay? <laughs> playwright. Pam Harrison did a play called Big Love Needs, uh, Big Girls Need Love Too. Season, reason for the season, the big threes, and many more. And if you ever go to one of Pam's plays, you will definitely love them because she has the most beautiful vocalists. I've never heard so many people saying so beautiful. And you know, a lot of our African Americans just love to sing. They are not trained singers. You know, Mahalia Jackson was a trained singer, but she could sing. But the plays that she brings out, they just natural singers, and they are just beautiful. They, they tell a great story. So Pam, thank you for your engineering of the different plays that you put together. Dolly does the same thing. She puts together very good spiritual plays. They put me in the mind of Lorraine Hansberry, uh, uh, Berry, who was a playwright and a writer and was the first African-American author to have a play performed on Broadway. So Pam be on Broadway pretty soon. And her play was A Raisin in the Sun. And you probably all are familiar with The Raisin in the Sun. It highlights the lives of black Americans in Chicago living under racial segregation. The title of the play was taken from the poem Holland by Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? That's one of the things that she promoted. And here's another one, Katrina Hamilton. She's an attorney from a native of Relton County. Her parents may be out there. Raise your hand, parent. There she go. She's out there. There you go. They're right there. I know they're proud of her daughter. Because she is a graduate of RS Central High School. She went to school at North Carolina Central University in Durham with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Further her education in law uh, school at, in uh, Florida, a coastal school of law. And then she graduated from Florida Coastal School of Law in 2016. Katrina passed the bar exam in Florida. Due to Katrina's excellent work as a Maricor legal 
Bella attorney, she was hired as a full-time staff attorney for Three Rivers Legal Services, representing low-income veterans in all areas of civil legal services. According to Katrina's mother, she has opened up her own law firm. Give her a hand. That's great. She's opened up her own law firm. And the trailblazer that has led the way for all women leaders is Charlotte E. Ray, who was the first American lawyer in the United States. And Ray graduated from Howard University School of Law. And Ray was the first practicing law lawyer in Washington, D.C. Along with Ray and Katrina Hamilton, we could add on Michelle Obama. She's the American lawyer, and she's an author, served as the first lady of the United States President, Obama. And then we have now Kamala Harris as the first American uh, politician and attor attorney, and is the 49th female President, and you know who I'm going to say now, the lady that had just won the United States District uh, Court is uh, Kanija Brown Jackson. That name always throw me. She was sworn in as the first black woman on the Supreme Court as the 116th judge. You see, we started off in the fields, but look where we are now almost past where we was born, but into the White House now. And that means a lot for black women, because now you have someone that you can look at that's like you, that can encourage you to become who you wanted to become. That's important to know, because in our classrooms, no offense to anybody, I've been out there schooling for a long time. If you don't see somebody that looks like you, you get discouraged, don't you? you get very discouraged. You're looking at a black woman tonight, I'm a little bit discouraged because I'm not gonna believe a thing she's saying because she doesn't look like me. So you wanna make sure that in your rooms or in the, I don't know, whatever, whatever organization you're in, put a variety of different diverse type of people in the organization so somebody else can appreciate everything that everybody is doing because we want to work together as a group of people as a team trying to make a difference in our community and to make that difference we all have to have people that look like us in leadership that's just Doris crude point of view for the day okay oh here I am now okay I'm a <laughs> didn't know I was gonna come up next I should have read my bio but anyway <laughs> This is me today, educator, business owner, town of Rutherfordton council member. I, have, I am truly enjoying being a part of Rutherfordton town. To me, that is such a plus. You think when you retire, you can go home and sit down and not do anything. I'm not the type of person that sits in a rocking chair. I can tell the state of North Carolina, thanks to you for sending me that beautiful rocking chair that you sent me when I retired, but I haven't sat in it yet. <laughs> Stuffed animals are sitting in it. <laughs> So I'm not the person, I'm not that type of person. I will have to sit down, but not right now. Let me enjoy the town of Rolston for a little while longer, and then maybe I'll sit down. Here we have Rosaline Francis. She also is the uh, council member of town of Spindale. I talked to her tonight, pray for her, because she's having surgery in the next couple of days. So she couldn't be here tonight. So I, I say, Rosaline, I'm gonna talk about you. You better listen, you know? Anyway, oh my God, Tasha. Lawrence, she's a sports trainer. How many ladies do you know that love to do basketball, baseball, running, swimming, jumping over hurdles? When I read her bio, it just impressed me. She graduated from Winston-Salem State College, and she is back at Chase High School. She was known for a lot of sport activity. They gave her a lot of awards. She was elected with a, maybe some of her friends to go and participate in the blue and white team. I don't know what that is. It must be basketball or something. You know, I really don't know what that was. But anyway, she is one of the really a sports trainer that's going to make a real big difference in Relton County because her love is for the young people. She's trying to encourage them to do their best and to understand the sports that they love so much. So I applaud her for being who she is. She does them. And I think in the NFL, now I'm not good at sports, so forgive me if I mess this up, okay? Mr. Hines will let me know if I'm wrong. You had a Jennifer King that was in the NFL this year as a, as a coach. 
and it's the assistant coach, and this was the first time for her. You know, and that's enough for someone else to look at. You know, boys love sports. They love football and basketball. I had kids in my Sunday school class. Kenneth, look Kenneth, I know it's a male, but look Kenneth now is in Virginia. And he's also in the sports, the football team. So you never know if you can help a child come and, and enjoy what they want to do and encourage him to go ahead and get it done. Because that little boy, he knew the back of his hand about that football. I'll tell anybody, little Ken knew that football. And I am so thankful that he got chosen to play at that college there in Virginia. Is that correct? Wise, right? Wow. Yes, yes, his grandpa up there, I know he's excited about that. But you never know how you can help some other kid get to where they need to be. So remember, this young girl right here, she's doing some awesome stuff, and I applaud her for that. That lady right there, her name is Felicia Hip. She is an awesome nurse. She started here at Isotherm and she moved on and got a degree. And then she taught classes and then she worked at Relton Hospital and now she's in Asheville doing a lot of great things up there. She is one of those nurses that you want in your directory to call because she really knows how to take care of someone. She's doing a great job. And I don't know if you all remember a, a lady by the name of Joyce Lynch that worked in Relaforton. She's another Joyce Lynch that cares about what she does. Not only just Harriet Tugman can take care of a whole group, this young lady can too, and she's a good person to exercise it well. You know, she puts all the pieces together, so she does a good job. We're talking about models. You know, this young Miss Long here, a young little girl is getting ready to go into, we talked about young people starting their own business. Miss Long is getting ready to do the same thing. She's a beautiful model. Uh, we have Carla Tweedy as a model, and Tracy Little John Fuller is a model. You all see Tracy a lot in magazines. You see her in the Biltmore House commercials. Those girls are doing some great things in modeling. We got business owners, Bre uh, Brenda Davis, she owns her own daycare center. I don't know if you had a chance to get up to Lake Lure or not to see the Mullen Bible Camp. I don't know if you had an opportunity, but if you Get an opportunity. Please go by and see Miss Yvonne Gordon. She's an educator and also she's a business owner. And they refurbished a Bible camp back to life. We took our young youth, youth kids up there last year, and it's a beautiful place, a safe place. I felt it was safe. It's just that night bears come out. Well, bears come out in your backyard. So <laughs> join the crowd up there in Lake Lua, okay? But anyway, give her a call. Ask her to let you come up and tour her site. He has, she has a beautiful site. Carol Davis, I put her up there because it's not a lot of women that has to be responsible for two churches. And Carol was responsible for two churches. And I thought that was remarkable. It's probably, if you can get through one church, you are very good. But just to do two on a Sunday, to me, that's amazing. And I liked her for that. Miss Rachel Green, you know, we all got the right to vote. And when we took this picture, Miss Rachel Green was 99 years old. So she led the pack. You see these ladies beside her. She led the pack into voting. She thought voting was her right to do. So she's encouraging everybody. Now she sits at maybe 104, maybe a little bit older. But she's still alive, and she still believes in voting. So you do have a right to continue voting at your age. I don't know if any of you know Miss Mary Dickerson, almost 94, 95 years old. She has a sweet spirit about her. She too worked at Carver High School, and she was a teacher. And we just buried Miss Bennings uh, recently, and she wrote a book that was called Cracked Wheat. If you can find that book, please buy it. It is unbelievable. She talked about different herbs that can heal you. And she talked about Saluda in the book, and she talked about uh, Far City, Gramtown. She loved her town, Gramtown. She even wrote a book called Moving to Gramtown, which was a great book that she put together about all of her relatives and all of her connection in Gramtown. Great books of Miss Late uh, Miss Teresa Ben, and everybody loved her, really. I don't know if you guys know Miss Ruby Mills. Miss Ruby Mills is sitting up there, very high number. But you can't stop her. I don't care where she is. She's going to feed you something out of that car that she has. She has food all the time. She is a great leader and a teacher. We do in relevant to, at the Martin Luther King Committee, we do a reading program on Saturday. And you know kids can't sit down. Anybody elementary kid teacher? 
Kids don't like to sit down, but Miss Ruby has some type of way about her that can calm my little nephew down, and he's a real wired up young fella. But when he gets around Miss Ruby, he really gives an attention to Miss Ruby, and he learns to read. We got a report back from the elementary school talking about when the kids was in our program, said that them sitting up, when they sit up under Miss Ruby, they have increased in reading. To me, that meant a lot. That meant Miss Ruby is doing some great things. Here we have the educators. Now, I can't say enough about education. Education is one that can include all of us. And I used to tell my students when I worked at Isotherma, learning is fun, and I really think it is. I often say it, especially if you have an interest in encouraging teacher who would encourage their learning through knowing and caring. Sometimes we have teachers like that. Now, I'm going back when I was in high school at Carver High School, okay? We had a math teacher named Mr. E.D. Roberts. Mr. E.D. Roberts, if you didn't know how to do a math uh, problem, he would take that eraser and throw it all the way across that room until you got that problem right. <laughs> you know, nowadays they would probably call the law on him. Mr. Edie didn't care. I don't know who was in Mr. Edie's class, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. We also had a lady by the name of Miss Jernigan. She would get in that gym floor and we would exercise and she would waltz us up and down that gym until we all learned how to waltz. Can your children waltz today? They should have been in Miss Jernigan's class because they would have learned how to waltz. I've always had fun all my life that I can remember, all my life. And so I hung out with a bunch of four or five girls. And we would come down the hallway of Carver School in the hallway. You've probably been there before. And there's a lady by the name of Miss Pettiford. And she would stand in the door and she said, ladies are to be seen and not heard. Well, we were loud. <laughs> I mean, we was worse than guys. But when she said that, that thing stuck to me. You know, and I'll never forget that. So the ladies that we had at Carver and the gentlemen that we had at Carver talked us the value of what it's all about. I don't know if the school system is like that today, but we learned quite a bit. I even learned how to sing under Mr. Head, Franklin Head. He had the chorus. And I've got a real high voice anyway. I guess I was born that way. And he used to tell us in the gym when we practiced, he said, I want all these sopranos to raise the roof off. I said, oh my God, that's me. But I learned how to sing. I really did. And I think I do pretty good at it now, at least at the church. I hope I do. I'm real happy to be one of those ones that like to sing. But Carver High School, we was all segregated back in 69. And then they came in and we got integrated in 69. Okay, that was a change. That was a big change for people my age at that particular time. We quite didn't understand. You had to go into the school that had to accept you. Not only did we had to accept them, they had to accept us. And when I say them, we went into another school. We was formed out from RS Central to East to Chase. And some people got really sick behind that. It affected them quite a bit. So when we, and you probably have had that experience too, being, I know, you had to leave your school that you loved so well and to go to another school. That was dramatic for a lot of us at that particular time. But we got through it, we all fanned away, and all is well. So that was good on that one. And here's some more educators. I th uh, Miss uh, ben uh, Antoinette uh, Tanya Barkin is down at East, and she was East High. Teacher of the Year in 2022, Miss Martha Hamilton. Is she here? I see Mr. Hamilton. She's going to kill me. A very good, sensitive teacher, but she means well when she talks. Her spirit is so sweet. Uh, you would want to be in her class as well. We have Carolyn Fuller. She's an educator from Relaforton, and now she's teaching someplace else. Miss Dawkins is an educator. She talked the other night, and she talked about how that the learning books that we got at Carver were secondhand books. They was all marked up. Why they give us books that was marked up? They was used books. We never got new books at that. So our learning that we done as the years went on had to be on our own. You see, that's the way that was. She told the story. Rachel Hamilton uh, was an educator, very good educator. Jackie Hampton in community uh, leadership class, uh, 
organizations now, an educator, a principal. Dr. LaRonda Whiteside, she was a, a great educator in school. And I think a lot of these people are still doing different active work in the community as well. I think that's the end of that one. So that tells you a lot about some of the women in Relta County. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to do a part two of this same thing and maybe around about May, I hope, if I get it all together. But let me also let you know one thing before I get ready to close. Okay, I want to tell you, um, there's a poem that's called by Langston Hughes, one of my favorite poems, I used to teach it in class a lot. It's called Mother to Son. It says, well, son, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stairs. It's had tax in it and splendors and boys torn up and a place with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time I've been a climbing and reaching and landing and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on those steps because you kind of find it kind of hard. Don't you fall now for eyes stills going. Honey, eyes stills climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stairs. A life for all these people that I've been talking about hasn't been the crystal stairs. But one thing I can also assure you of anything that anybody have a struggle getting to, they believed. They believed that the steps that they make is guided by the Lord. And he will always take care of us as a group of people. And he would land us into the place that we're supposed to be. Because he set that out for us to do in the very beginning. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much for listening to me. Again, my name is Doris Crute. I'm going to call up my artist over there, Deborah Hamilton. You come over quickly, please. Deborah, can you tell us about your picture, please? Um, this picture came to be during the time that I was trying to prepare for a show, and it was right before coronavirus, so I never did get to do the show. But this is one of my first uh, pieces. So I was. Um, when I was preparing for the show, it's about uh, slavery and different atrocities that black people have had to endure. And so as I was doing my, um, looking around and, and doing my research, I found a story of a man, his name is Whip Gordon. And I couldn't find a last name or anything like that, but I found it's Whip Gordon. And the reason he's called Whip Gordon is because back when he was a slave during the Civil War, this man was beaten to almost, he was dead. Beaten bad by, um, and it wasn't by the man that owned him, but it was one of the overseers. And so he was almost killed. I mean, he said he had to lay there like that on his stomach just for weeks waiting for this, you know, to heal. But once it healed, praise God, he, um, he ran away and he went up north and he joined the Union Army. And when he joined the Army, he had to get a, um, a physical. So the guy who was um, giving the physicals, when he took his clothes off and stuff, he saw this. And he was enraged by it because during that time, um, the people in the South had northern people thinking, oh, we're good to our slaves. Oh, yeah, they, they, they love, they happy. You don't have to worry about that. They're happy here. So when he saw this, it enraged him because he knew that it was a lie. So he took a picture of him, and he took these pictures and spread it all over the north so people could see what was really going on in the South. Mm. And so he went on, I think it's going to be a movie about him and Will Smith that's going to play him. Huh? It's already out. Okay, I haven't seen it, but I, I I can't wait to see it because I couldn't find much about his you know his regular life. I just found the story, but of course you know other people can go in and research and find stuff that you can't. So I'm ready to see this, and it meant a lot to me when I heard his story. It just moved me so much in my heart just to think about what he had to go through, and so I made that. This was my first piece, and um, it's Will Garden. Thank you, Deborah. We appreciate it so much. It's back to you. Thank you so much. Uh, one thing that was not mentioned in her biography that she sent the library staff, uh, about 20 years ago, <clears throat> Ms. Crute started a summer reading program. And it became so successful with those young people in the New Hope community especially that Congressman Charles Taylor took notice of it and he started helping her giving awards and recognizing and all of that. And I'm sure that a lot of those young people who got involved in that reading program who are now in their 20s and 30s are successful people because they began to love 
reading. And you can't be successful at anything if you can't read. And I believe that. But thank you all for coming. I know the weather probably intimidated some folks tonight, but it didn't turn out to be quite so bad. And it's a good group, and we appreciate, we appreciate all of you being here. And I want to encourage you, five weeks from today, our next History Matters program put on by Isothermal Community College Library will be about the rise and fall of the textile industry in Rutherford County. And I want you to know, for most of my life, the textile industry was the backbone of the economy of Rutherford County, and for many years before that. And so if you, if you know anyone, or if your family members were involved in textiles at any time, you're gonna miss a good program if you don't show up on the sixth day of April, five weeks from today, beginning at 5.30, our two speakers are two of my favorite people. Mr. Philip White, some of you know him as the former principal at Cliffside School. Mr. Philip White is going to speak about two of the influential families who helped to start the textile industry in Rutherford County and establish textile communities that we know today. And then following his presentation, <clears throat> Mr. Hines, Terry Hines, who was vice president of Rutherford County Operations for Cone Mills Corporation for many years, will speak on the events that took place to cause the closing of many of the textile mills and the sad days that came to Rutherford County as a result of it. And uh, I think it's gonna be a very exciting and interesting program. Please be here five weeks from tonight, April the 6th at 5.30, and invite others to come with you. Thank you so much. Have a good, safe trip home, and thank you for coming.